Welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is my interview with the lovely Ben Harris. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe? And after this, can you check out onlinemagic.co? <laughs> Not show, .co. This is my, oh, get me out in the right place. This is my online magic course, uh, resource, program, whatever you want to call it. There are so many videos now. It's more than just a course. Over 800 now, live sessions every month. And uh, coins, ropes, sponge balls, loads and loads of card stuff, performance tips, how to practice course, um, just new uploads every single month so have a look at that check it out that's onlinemagic.co if you like that you will love this if you love this you will if you like yeah that uh no if you like this you'll love that <laughs> there you go it's flawless and professional so very briefly this is my interview with ben harris well it's an interview it's a chat i want these to be kind of organic chat so I have a load of questions I don't usually ask them all and we just chat about life magic and everything this is a corker Ben is someone I've respected and followed for many many years and he's got so much experience you really owe it to yourself to watch and learn from this I'll be talking to Ben again you know we went for an hour we could have gone for another five hours so we'll be talking again in January about his very exciting new project uh, and this is not like a product thing we only talk about it briefly but we talk about symmetry parity and the chimera deck which is his re latest release from vanishing which is absolutely brilliant i'll be doing and by the time you watch this i probably would have done a separate review on that but that's only a small part of what we talk about so do yourselves a favor watched a lot and if you share it that'll be lovely as well so here is my interview with ben uh ben harris we've um man we've been in touch <laughs> kind of on and off like for I don't know, years or something? <laughs> and, years and years and years and years. Um, and it's a pleasure to finally, you know, catch up like this. Um, and I appreciate, you know, your support over the years. You've always been very positive, kind, approachable. And, um, yeah, you seem like a lovely dude. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope it's not all just front. You know, as soon as the camera stops, I'm a monster. <laughs> no, I, I can't imagine that at all. <laughs> um, I'm, and, I'm the, really... and the fact that you, you the, the fact that you like to dig into things in detail and think things through, not just magically, but I mean, your ramblings. I mean, you know, you're touching on life issues, and it's important. We need to discuss these things. Yeah, I think so. Just for those who don't know, uh, I do. When Ben says ramblings, I do kind of morning. Most mornings, I do a kind of improvised chat on Facebook about nothing, basically. And sometimes stuff comes up, and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, it's great fodder over coffee. You know, it's it's perfect. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I've been kind of see. I got into into magic quite late. You know, I got into it at about twenty, and I was kind of not in the. I've never really been in the community, really. So, so because of kids and because of lifestyle and stuff like that, and I couldn't manage to get the conventions. And you were always someone that I saw your your published pieces everywhere and was fascinated with them instantly. Uh, a lot of it because the way they des they were described, a lot of it was what, you know, once, once I got into kind of reading it and the kind of the, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to just know when, when you started getting publishing, which was early 80s, I think, wasn't it, magic-wise? Uh, yep, 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 early 80s, um, 1982, yeah. Yeah, so what was the scene like that, what was it, because that wasn't, I wasn't doing magic then, I wasn't in the, in the world at all, what was it like now, I, I, not, I know we've got internet now, not that, but what was it like compared to now, what was sort of the buzz then? The, the buzz was the, um, your, your Paul Harris's, your Daryl's, your Michael Amar's, and um, a very uh, not rough and ready publishing scene, but I mean, we basically had typewriters, and you you would type things out, um, paste them down, photocopy them, or, or go and have plates made and print them. They had a certain look, a certain naivety, but the joy of the magic came through, and that was the important thing. And in fact, one of the favourite things I, I find is when I'm going through my library, it's the old magazines. They're just full of 
life and they capture their times. Magic magazines of the 70s show you what was happening in the 70s, show you what people were thinking uh, and developing, discussing, loving, hating, um, and that's how things evolve. Yeah, uh, see, so, I, that's, what, that's what, you know, you said that they showed you, that's it. I think that's what I'm sort of getting at. It was a bit of a difficult question, so mm. what's the vibe? But that's exactly what I meant, was that there, there seemed to be one, and there seemed to be, with, with you and Paul Harris especially, there was a kind of, and to an extent, Doug Henning, even though Doug was, and I, again, I wasn't right, even though Doug was on, on telly and everything, there was a kind of underground feel to him, you know, with the no shoes and stuff. There, there, was, there seemed to be a kind of hangover from the kind of 60s, in a good way, I mean. Yeah, yes, yes, there was. I mean, Paul Harris was hippy-trippy. Paul Harris is still hippy-trippy. Daryl was um, so sadly missed. He was hippy-trippy. I mean, um, Henning, hippy-trippy. Um, all lovely people and their joy and their happiness sort of reflected in their magic and that made it contagious. You think of Paul Harris's work, it is contagious. Doug Henning was contagious. The greats are contagious. They've got that, that essence about them. Um, Doug was an inspiration. I used to have a T-shirt that said, magic is alive, Doug Henning proved it. <laughs> I was like 18 at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe a little older, but yeah, yeah. I want that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all done. Mum, my mum made it up in glitter. It was. Oh, did yeah, you? It oh, it was a. Glitter, it was yeah. a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the sort of. My mum was what... good. Go on. My mum was. My mum was good. I my close up pad, which I have here. Excuse me. Boom. This is twelve layers of velvet. It has been around the world with me three or four times. My mum made that in nineteen seventy six. It hasn't got a mark on it. It's, yeah. Amazing. It's one of those things. Yeah, it is. It is, you know. I've got a close-up pad. I was sent. Was good. Yeah, I've got a close-up pad I was sent a couple of years ago, and I think they're about 300 quid, and it's starting to wear through already. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I honestly cannot believe this thing doesn't have a mark on it. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Um, a bit, a so bit vel like... Velvet is better, you know. Well, look at this for a segue. A bit uh, because there is. <laughs> I love a, seg a good segue, well, dude. Well, it's not really a segue. It's kind of, a, I suppose, it's a metaphor that close-up pad mm -hmm. to that thing of that longevity, and that, and then that, that's what I kind of. When you said that, I totally thought of this. You know, with you and Paul Harris and Mike Lamar yeah. and Daryl, even though he isn't with us anymore, his work. Yes. Yep. 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 It doesn't go yeah. away, Ben. And I don't think that's... Um, you can say that about a lot of creators, but actually I don't think that's true. I think a lot of creators now will go away. Yeah. I don't mean that in a negative, dark way, but I mean their, their work won't... I don't think that there's, there's kind of an instant kind of gratification to a lot of the stuff that's published now, which to me... I, 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 don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't think things lasting a long time matter anymore. It's just... It's, a, it's, it's, it's the way we are today. Andy Warhol's, you know, 15 minutes of fame, which actually he didn't say that, but he's often quoted as saying that. Um, it's now 15 seconds of fame, if that. And you have to fight like hell for that. Um, we are expecting something new all of the time. It's trash with flash, but it's working. It's it's what people seem to want. I don't think it's a good thing because you cannot continue like this forever. We will all get bored. We will all die from boredom. This is why on occasion I disappear from magic for like five or six years at a time because I just lose that spark. I get bored and I don't see the spark anywhere else. Then I just go away until the spark returns. And that way you can come back with a vigor and an excitement because if you're not excited about your work, just stay in bed. Simple as that. You've got to be enthused. I agree. And, and I think that, that there's something you said there. You said, you said it's, that longevity isn't important anymore. And I would, I know exactly what you're saying, by the way. Well, uh, well I, I, I think it's got to the stage where <clears throat> it's not seen as being important, but I think it is desperately important because we lose who we are if we forget who we are. And there's no one trying to remember who we are at the moment magically. 
and probably with many other disciplines. But I mean, magically, I mean, dude, look at the um, all the peak devices just in the last 12 months. What are we doing? We're chasing our tails. Uh, that's a sign of boredom. I know that, and that's, it's funny, you totally just answered the question I was just about to say well, it was a comment when you said it's... Well, there you go, I'm a psychic too. Yeah. It, I know, it's great. There's a feeling of... Um, <laughs> because that's, you're absolutely right. There, there is a feeling of it not being important, that longevity, but as, as you said, the, it, it is important, it will always be important. And I think that the... There's this kind of, you know, every, every time I speak on the channel about... Paul Harris, Ben Harris, Michael Amar, Daryl, that people are interested, you know, and, and this is contemporary, this is young people as well, they hear the story and they want to go back to it. And, and I think that the, it was important that that was happening then because there was a foundation being laid and, and that foundation, I think, oh. is sort of being covered and we've yeah. got to start uncovering it again, maybe. Yeah, but every every now and then you see you see you know the arms of foundation just breaking through those barriers and coming back. I mean, we stand on the shoulders of giants. We always have done. We always will do, which probably means most of the the crappy stuff will fall to one side. You see, the internet and social media has got a lot to do with this. Nowadays, it seems that you have to have an effect that just pops over the screen. And that's it, with no thought about, well, how do you get into it in the real world situation? How do you then get out of it? And what does it actually mean other than just, boom, there it is. Look at me. Richard Kaufman's um, described this many, many years ago in an, an issue of Richard's Almanac when he was discussing um, I think the big drill bit finale to a cups and balls routine, he's, he wasn't impressed. And he said, well, look, basically anyone can get a shock result by pulling down their pants. That's <laughs> all it takes, man. You know, I mean, um, it, it, it has to have context if it's to have meaning. Does it have to have meaning? That's another question. It probably does if you want it to be remembered, to be effective, to last, to create change, to cement what is already good. Um, uh, yeah. It's, yeah it's, I, you could talk around this in, in millions of ways. It's great. And let's do that for about the next six hours because I'm interested. <laughs> I, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm down. My battery I, will probably run out. But yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Because um, you said then about the, and, and this is, um, my sort of relationship, my sort of opinion of this is changing a bit. So you've got the, like you said, the instantaneous gratification, the the kind of internet magic trick that's quick and snappy and doesn't have any depth and people can watch it on TikTok in 30 seconds. And, I, and don't get me wrong, I, I look at that personally and I go, I don't like it. And now I think sometimes I do like it. And to me, it's like having a dirty burger, right? It's like a dirt, not a good burger, like a dirty burger. <laughs> That's cheap yeah, and yeah, you're hungry. Yeah. And I think there's well, a place. Some, yeah. Yeah, Sometimes you know what I mean? Quick and cheap is good. Exactly. <laughs> but, but then the problem is if, that's, if, you, if you're brought mm. up to think that's all that food is, mm. you know, and you don't well, experience a go. lovely yeah. meal, you know, and, mm. and that's, mm. I think, the danger of it. When, when I talk to non magicians sometimes about magic of a certain age, that's what they, that's what they think magic is. And that's why they're so yeah. surprised when they see a show that is different or has a little bit more depth and has yeah yeah well it's it's the it's the mcdonald's diet syndrome i mean if you eat mcdonald's something different off the menu every day i mean you are going to gradually get sick both mentally and physically there was a documentary actually made about this yeah, some super sorry, guy man. i can't remember his name did did this um you, you know there's more to food more to life than fast food um, and I think your analogy is very, very good. Magic in many ways is now like a fast food type of thing. But, 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 you, you know, every now and then something really deep and beautiful and wonderful comes along. And I think people then take stock and then start asking questions about everything else. You know, does it really do the trick? Is it effective? Is it manageable? Um, you know, can I work with it day to day? 
Yeah, and I, I mean, think... and, yeah, I mean, what is it? What is it to be a magician today? Is it just to be able to perform a quickie over TikTok, or is it to be able to entertain a live group of people in a meaningful and entertaining manner? Um, the line seems to be drawn a little bit. Yeah, I think there's another level as well, uh, and uh, and and we are basically going to go into soon. Um, I want to talk about you, you, you more and your sort of past, but this, this is a a level that I've thought as well. I don't know whether age is a part of it, but I, I also almost see doing a close-up gig. So, you, you know, one of those ones where you turn up, like a lot of them, you've got to get around 20 tables in limited time. So you can't do any of your plot. You can't do them. With, I want to talk about plot as well, but we can't, you, you've just got to do your, and it's almost like TikTok magic yeah. a bit, you know? And I think you, for doing that for a few years, you get that lovely gratification, that pleasure of people going, that's amazing. Yeah. But you get to a point where you go, there's, there's something more in this. And it's a similar thing, right? Yep. We, we, you know. It is a similar thing. Um, but at least when you, you're performing that TikTok style of magic in a live situation, you do actually have interaction. So people can possibly you know, be allowed to say yes or no or touch this or something happens in their hands. So I think you cross a barrier a little bit, you know? Um, yeah. Your TikTok and your social media seem so judgmental. It's like, is this good? Um, you know, like me. Um, surely magic needs to be more than, you know, just like me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it. I think that's happened to me a bit in the live situation mm. as well. Because wet... I can't remember who said it the other day on a magic interview. Oh, it's going to annoy me. But they said uh, people get into magic for the same <laughs> reasons and stay in it for different reasons. You know, it's that thing. If you get into it for ego, everybody thinks it's yep. great or whatever. And then mm. it's and, and I think also you get to a point where ma magic can not just be in this close up magic gig situation. It can be in a show where people are kind of focused and we can give mm. a little bit more depth to it. And and I think. Yep. Going back to your work, what I was reading, I read mm. read a lot, went back to a lot of stuff yesterday. Mm. Is that it all Thank requires? You very much. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's I mean, it's just fascinating no, to me. Thank you. Yeah. B because it it requires this kind of leap of faith mm. uh, uh, that that you won't always be able to do in that kind of right. You have got two minutes at this table, you know. It's it's but it but the more time you've got in that scenario, the mm. the more magical it is. I'm thinking about. Um, mm. The crossroads and things like that, which you know we can talk mm. about. Where yes, if... yeah, they yeah yeah they, they yeah they're more sort of set pieces in so much as they take time um, and an, an investment in in your audience investing back in you. Um, yeah yeah, I, I think that's very important. I when I perform live, I pretty much just have a set list and then I just wing it because it's the reactions from the audience. They take you where you need to go to be most effective for that situation. If Stephen King writes about plot, um, and I take this on board, I've discussed it in various books. Uh, as Stephen King says, plot can't be treated with too much respect. Because it clearly, if you have a clear plot, you know the beginning, the middle, and the end, and and you're just going to work your way from point A to point B to point C. Instead, why not just have an idea and then throw some characters into a scene and see how they work it out? And you come up with great plots and um, and great magic tricks just like that. Yeah, I want to go. I want to go back to that. Um... Remind me because I, I I think that's so important and yeah. there's a there's a com, uh, a context there for me as well. But before we do, we jumped into this, and I just want to want because some people are going to watch this and they're not going to you know you're, you're like me Ben we're we're old right so we're we've, uh, we've, yeah. <laughs> we started in a different generation and then there was a gap. I'm glad you well, said that. Uh, well, yes. You know, and we and, and you 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 talked about this kind of resur resurgence of the foundations, and you you coming back into magic was such a joy for me. Or, or publishing, yes. you know, I'm not saying you've ever been, you know, because we've been communicating. Mm. But just to, for the people, just tell them what you would, what your kind of entrance into the magic world was. What sort of got you known? What you know? What was what, when when Ben Aris came on the scene? What made people go? Oh, is this guy? 
Um, it was the Trick Epic Flight, which um, was a marking pen and a couple of keys. You, you mark a, a cross on one of the keys and um, the two keys, one with the cross and the one without the cross, change places. Mm. Um, it used a new scientific principle at the time um, with a whiteboard marker and an oil marker inter secretly interchanged. And, um, yeah, that was big and that Jeff Busby, of all people, jumped on top of that, sold thousands, as did Hank Lee. That's the one that got me noticed. Um, it was the novelty value. Here we had a transposition that could be it's, it's pretty much self-working. And, um, yeah, very proud of it. Lovely trip. And that was, what, 82? 1982. Bang, you nailed it. You've done your research. Well, <laughs> but... Um, so that was the and were you perform were you just creating or were you performing as well then? I was performing full time at a restaurant, um, Sombrero's Mexican restaurant. It was the first um, close up magic residency in Australia at the time. Three nights a week, I met my wife there. My wife is Malaysian. I met her in a Mexican restaurant in Australia. Uh, <laughs> Great. And yeah, lovely, lovely memories. Yeah, most definitely. People were lined up around the block. They were the good old days. I mean, and that was Brisbane, Ben. Were you in Brisbane then? Brisbane, in Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're still and there did now. that um, all the way through to 1996. Wow. <clears throat> so you, yeah, you, so you. Yeah. Were, and so, so that got you onto the scene, and then, was it Cosmosis <clears throat> after that? Was that the? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, most definitely Cosmosis. That was the, the biggie uh, for a variety of reasons. One, it is a cool, I, I think, and still think, um, solution to a problem of, of, of a close-up levitation where you don't have to worry about the hassle of dealing with threads. The hassle has already been taken care of for you. No anchors to worry about. So tell people... It's tell a trick people... that you... Sorry, sorry, interrupt, Ben, but I just, I just want you to tell, because everybody watching yeah, this yeah. is going to be thinking, what's Cosmosis? But they all know what it is, but they don't know they know what it is. So tell them what okay, it is. Okay, well, Cosmosis, the floating mat, the, yeah, it's the floating match on cards. Sorry, there you go. Yeah. Old age, um, early onset dementia. Um, the floating card, uh, the floating match above the card. So it basically uses an array of threads. Um, it's become a toy, the most ripped off trick in close-up magic quite possibly i think you'll find everybody will tell you that and also a nice thing about it was being a levitation with a thread it solved the wobble problem because levitating with threads you've always got a wobble i mean these things look like tops spinning around well cosmosis solved that and it was self-working and man boom um it was a limited release of 1000 pieces in conjunction with my first world lecture tour, it sold out and within a month it was um, ripped off by a company in Austria to begin with. No names. <clears throat> and and boom, it's been ripped off ever since. And that's the thing. So you got no, so so just so people know that that trick that most people yep. w w look at as a, you know, the one that you buy for three quid in all magic shops, are, you know. Yep, that's the one. Yep. Yep. All the threads going across that it. That originally sold. For, Go on. Yeah, that originally sold for $50 as an exclusive. Uh, the people that paid $50 for it, um, you know, had it as an exclusive for, you know, a couple of months. And then, boom, out of my control, I didn't rip myself off. Um, and away we go. There are some interesting stories there. I mean, um, a big Indian company were making tens of thousands of these a month. And Murphy's was selling tens of thousands of the ripoffs a month. Mark Murphy rang me up and said, Ben, I feel guilty. This is your trick. I'm selling these ripoffs, but I'm not going to stop selling them because I'm making a fortune. But can I cut you in? I mean, but that's and to this day, every month I get a royalty check from Murphy's for ripoff versions of Cosmos, oh, my floating okay. match, which is a beautiful thing. I mean, every month to this day. And we're you know, 50 incredible. or 45 years late. Yeah, yeah. There are some really good people in magic. You've got to look for yeah. them sometimes, but they're there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we do. And there are. And, you know, and I think mm. that the the interesting thing 
about that trick for me is that well for, there's a couple of stories that when i when i first ever learned any magic for, i was in australia right and i and i i went over to australia wow, okay yeah yeah so i went over to australia in when i was must have been 19 um wow so 73 83 not, not yeah 82 yeah so weirdly enough yeah around about yep. 82 it would have been so no, it wouldn't have been. No, 90, 91, 92, sorry. 92, 91, 92, right? 92, so I went over yep, there. Yep, 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 yep. And I was um, in Sydney and I was a juggler as a hobby and I met this guy that had a shop in Sydney called Juggling Magic and More, right? And they're all juggling outside. And it was a juggling and magic shop, right? As the title suggests. And I kind of met them because I was a juggler <laughs> and I sort of hung out. And, and he said to me, this guy called Dave, I'd love to get in touch with him again. He said, I'm going off to Taipei. I've got a gig. Do you want to run my shop for a couple of weeks? And I sat in the shop and wow. just played with magic tricks. I'd never... And the, the magic tricks there... Fun, but, fun, fun. Oh, man. And it was obviously thumb tip stuff mm. and all that. And that kept me out in Australia for a few months. But the, the big one was the, the floating match. And I did, he took me to a gig. He had a close-up magic gig. And I couldn't even do it. Yes. I'd only learn, a, you know, started to learn a French drop or whatever. And at this close-up magic gig, <laughs> he was doing like normal stuff. And this other guy was booked as a yep. magician. And he was walking around yep. just doing the floating match, right? That's it. <laughs> yep, right? yep, yep, yep. And blowing people away. And the, uh, the crap floating match, you know, the, the, the crappy kind of thing. Yep, 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 yep. And, yeah, and they, yeah. <clears throat> and they hold it the wrong way. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> the original instructions were like 24 pages of detail. Detail. The, you know, you buy it today for three bucks or whatever. And I mean, I encounter it at, 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 at um, farmers markets where people have set up stalls and they're selling novelties. And look, magic floating match. Uh, but all these things come with a single sheet. You can't discuss all of the details in making this a powerful magic trick in a single sheet. And, and um, that's what it is. It, it originally was a very powerful trick. You can actually perform it by having a card selected and then a spectator signing the back of the playing card and the match levitates off the back of their signature. They take the match and the signed card home with them. That's how it was. Have I got a message appearing on my screen now? No, you haven't. That's not on this one. No, okay. It just appeared on mine. Okay. Yeah. Um, um yeah i mean that's how i was performing it while while i was lecturing in 1986 i performed it to max maven to to dozens of performers max came over and said i oh, hear you've got this floating match you know show me that's how i met max maven 1986. Uh, i can't remember what convention it was but yeah wonderful and so sad to lose max i mean my god yeah very yeah, yeah incredibly and 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 actually, you mentioned Max Maven yesterday. I was reading it yesterday, right? I read that, read the whole thing yesterday, um, Cosmosis. And oh, well, okay. Uh, and I totally was thinking about Max Maven uh, for for different re other reasons than I have been recently. <laughs> yes. But you, 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 and it's exactly as happens with Cosmosis, a floating match. If you had, if nobody had seen that trick, right, and nobody had seen you, damn it. Or anybody damn it and it wasn't a thing and it wasn't free quid and we didn't know how good it was you would read that and go oh, is, that, is that gonna work you know because it makes the promises of looking amazing we all know it does now because that's why it's such a big seller and it's that's why it was ripped off because it's pretty much shelf working and it looks in, I'm, I'm always remember the first time i saw it even on the crappy version i was like that's incredible so thank you but when well, you yeah, it is um yeah yeah, so when I you read it, though... I remember the first time I performed oh, it for myself. It was like, wow, that's yeah, nice. It just yeah. looks, it looks nuts, but we take it for granted Yeah, it now, looks right? good, doesn't it? Mm. And your work, I think, has that, and Max's work as well. I remember reading the Prism book, you know, the, the compilation of the, the colours. Mm. And at the beginning, it says method, and you go, that sounds amazing. And you go, and then you look at the, sorry, the effect. And then you look at the method and go, oh, that's not going to really work. And I find that a lot with really strong mm. mentalism. And that's exactly what your work is like. Yeah. If nobody had seen that match trick, Ben, I, I think people mm. read it and go, oh, no, I can't really be bothered to. That's not going to. Mm. But because we see it, we know how good it is. And I also think that runs through mm. all of Bands of Gold, of Zoom, all those things that, mm. unfortunately, we haven't got that evidence in front of us where we see it all mm. the time. Mm. 
but it does deliver on impact. But there's a kind of mismatch between method and effect. The effect almost is too simple when you go, oh, that's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I th yes, I do. I, I, I think you have to sort of um, work for it a little bit. And I think yeah. that's good. I, I think it's very important to, to work things through, to be put in a position where maybe you're forced to think about something. Well, actually this or actually that. I mean, whoa, I could go either way. You make the decision yourself rather than have it all just laid out for you which is one of the reasons i much prefer to write books or to read books because i think you have to do a little bit of work um and that's just so important another important thing about books is that you can come across a book on somebody in somebody else's library a book that you will stumble across and it may change your life it's happened to me when I picked up Carl Sagan's Cosmos as a youngster of somebody's bookshelf. It changed my life. And I mean, I mean, it changed my life, my entire attitude to everything. If that was only a digital book, it wouldn't have changed my life because I wouldn't have stumbled across it because the only way you stumble across an ebook is if you're a hacker and you're in somebody else's computer. Yeah. You can't just stumble yeah. across an ebook and change your life it just doesn't happen books are so important books make you think if you have everything on a video i mean the videos are fine um, and they're great as a as an additional teaching tool but if you just have the video then you are just more than likely going to copy every step of the way without thinking that's not good that's no, the think, road to TikTok. yeah i think i think so and and yeah, there's you know. a uh, and I think that I think video to me is a great sort of slightly going off topic, I suppose. But the the great, I think what people are doing now is quite nice. That that when you think when you're trying to learn a move and you can't visualise it, it's sometimes quite nice to see almost like a sterile version of that move, you know, with no performance. I, like, that's I what agree a hundred percent. I mean, it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I, I just think you said as a general. I mean, we're talking about specialty yeah. learning here. I want to learn move X by Doctor Z. You know, yeah. that's boom, that's focus. Um, but often there's just this blind following. You know, what's laid out in front of you. You yeah. see it right across the magic industry. Um, uh, but it's probably always been that way. All that's changed is the media. Yeah, I think so. And, and it's the desire, I think, as well to, you know, it depends, it depends where you are in your learning. You know, it's, I, I kind of agree with the, the sort of Darren Brown thing of when you're first starting out, yeah, copy your way, just get comfortable with the stuff, you know, and, and then, mm, 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 but then mm. don't forget there's a get in the lovely, groove. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lovely creativity. Mm. And, and magic also gives us that lovely safety net of, you know, we've got that joy of having a trick to fall back on. So we can play with, yeah. with the, and if it doesn't quite hit, then we just fall back and it, it's a trick and they go, how the hell was that done? That was amazing anyway. So we've got that lovely freedom to be creative yeah. with magic, which I think so many of us don't use. And I'm, I've been guilty of it. You know, try a yeah. premise well, that might not work. Uh, who is yeah. the, and of course, who is the greatest um, proponent of that? And that's Uri Geller. I mean, you know, he will make a miracle out of anything. <laughs> And if it fails, you still come away totally amazed, um, which is pure showmanship. <laughs> and we have a lot to learn from that. that really, I mean, seriously. Uh, I know, I know. And we'll talk about we'll talk about Geller, but maybe briefly at the end of this. But what I do, because there, there is a, a, a an exciting thing occurring uh, in the very near future with you. But before we very do, near. I, very near. <laughs> Uh, which I was super excited about. I hope you remember to go back to it. <laughs> we'll talk about this at the end, everybody. If you, and you remind me, Ben, and we'll both forget. I'll try you know, to remind you. Yeah, we'll both forget, forget, mate. We're both, we're both not 20 anymore. <laughs> we're <laughs> both that old. <laughs> um, I, I want, so th this, what really interests me and what I'm starting to get excited about was what I didn't get excited about when I first got into magic, which is this thing of reading an effect and going... That is nuts. That surely isn't possible. And then reading the method and going, oh, is that it? But then understanding, yeah, that is it. And the, that doesn't weaken the effect at all. I think we, it's so easy, you know, when we see a miracle, 
and go, you know, if you read the effect, someone, the effect of a centre tear, right, which is someone doing that really, really well, you know, and the effect is someone writes down a bit of paper, they want a bit of paper, that's all that happens, gets torn up, and then you you do this beautiful reading around it, you, do, you know, and you and you completely floor them and tell them who exactly who they're thinking of, sometimes what age the person is they're thinking of, the relationship, all that stuff. And if you then go, oh, you tear the paper and have a look at it, it's so easy to go, oh, that's no good. But actually, the opposite is true. And, and when, with your new book, that is exactly, I think, the beauty and the danger of people taking it. Because you read, and, and I'm talking about Symmetry Parity in the Chimera deck. Uh, which is, got you know, I've got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, with, with a, you know, with a th and this isn't, you know, no, no, with the decks of cards in it. Now, I don't know, I'm going to talk around this, Ben. I don't know how much, you, you know, but this is taking, when you, this has got a I'll, lot of... I'll, I will answer all of your questions totally openly. There's, there's nothing to hide, man. I mean, this is just an honest expression of um, love of, of a deck of cards. Yeah, and, and, and it's a certain deck of cards, and then you've kind of gone through this creative yep. process. And I don't know how, how much you want to yeah. mention what deck of cards it is. Sometimes I think it's quite nice not to, you know, but it's, yeah. it's up, it's up yeah. to you, totally. Well, yeah, well, we, we talk about it. I mean, this is a, a totally fresh look at the classic Svengali deck. Um, 26 short cards, which are force cards typically, 26 regular cards. Um, but basically, apart from a few rather interesting effects with a regular Svengali deck, I then throw those 26 force cards away and start again. And that's when it really gets exciting. Um, yeah, it's there's some fun stuff in there. And it is, it is, it, is, it really is exciting. It's excited me more, way more than I thought it, it would. Well, it, it, it is, it, it, no, it, it really is. I mean, I'm trying to, I don't care who came up with this stuff. It's really exciting and fun to play with. Um, and hopefully I've written it in such a way that you get so excited you want to run away and explore new options yourself because that you can. You, you just need to configure the cards differently and you can go in totally different directions. Yeah, and I, I think also that... So what you do here as well... You, I'm going to do a, a, a review of the book as well, but you... you, you Thank you. you talking detail about what the experience of the trick is first okay so you've got the whole chapter yes, yep. that is you're just this is what the audience is and you are, what is happening and you read those effects the free effects or whatever at the beginning the, you know the one with the regular deck and then you've got parity and you're going this is yep. that's just the perfect magic trick pretty much right yes 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 and yep, then yep. you and then but as i mean i kind of was reading it and made myself almost forget the method <laughs> and then kind of just no just read it yep, and yep. Oh. And then you look at the method, yeah, and, yeah. and but there are a couple of things that take it away from even with the the routine you've got using the regular swing, it takes it mm. away from that. And you've yeah. got the the shuffle and okay. the, the you know this mm. kind of resurrection shuffle. Where, mm. but when I'm reading mm. it, I'm going, if it is that, how is that happening? How are they shuffling? How are mm -hmm. they? And of course, you read it and go, mm. of course. But as a magician, I'm reading that and thinking, mm. how is mm. that? So as a lay person. They've just got nowhere to go with it, you know, that they, in the fact it's being yeah, created it's, on stage yep. as well. Yep, yep. I, were, I would love somebody to perform one of these tricks for Penn and Teller. Um, I think it would be interesting, you know. Yeah. Uh, so because, I, because, I, I mean, it, 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 I mean you, you take the parity deck, for instance, which is um, the first step away in this work from the... Um, the regular Svengali deck. We basically apply Svengali to a regular deck of cards, so there are no force cards. I mean, boom, that's just totally out there. What we can do with that, as you know from reading the book, it, it's it's just mind-boggling. Um, yeah. And I, I think the lay people do not have a chance, and this stuff flies past most magicians so long as you don't sort of begin handling the cards like you would typically handle yeah. a Svengali deck because there are typical grips that just shout Svengali deck. 
Um, but you can get away from those and the book takes you away from those in many ways as well. Yeah, um, it, it does. And when we go on to the Tard the case of the Tardian, is that how you say it, Tardian? The, the tar with the, the Tardian case or case of the Tardian, yeah, it gets, yeah. That's, somebody think, does it one way, somebody does it the other way. and it, uh, It's just... The Tardian thingy. It's wonderful. I mean, it, it, it's, and it's taken it to this kind of really visual... There's colours everywhere, there's decks everywhere, there's switch, and, and, but also being really... It almost reminded me at the end of a Cups and Balls routine. You know the end of a Cups and Balls routine, you've got like four oranges and yep. thing and the melon and everything's yep, on the yep. table and it's just boom, a boom, beautiful boom. display. Yep, yep. You've got that thing yep. at the end where you've got... Uh, and I think it's... Yes. You know, but it, it takes... And going back to what we were saying earlier about the foundations, you know, we... I've made a big decision recently to... to well, to, to stop doing as many reviews and go back... I need to go back, you know... To, to uncover those foundations again, Ben. And I think part of the, the decision was sort of motivated by, again, sitting there over the last couple of days, reading your stuff and going, There's too, I'm missing too much here by, by running forward too far, too quickly. And I think we're all in wow. danger of that. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Um, well, it's profound that my work has affected you in that way, and I'm, I'm honoured. Um, but yeah, look, detail is where it's all at. Um, de you know, lots of detail makes something really, really beautiful, but the detail must be effortless and hidden. Uh, a great singer, <sighs> yeah, they hit all those notes so effortlessly. A great guitarist, David Gilmore, Carlos Santana, it's effortless. You never see a great artist struggle. The art is the concealment of the art. That's not mine. I can't remember who said it, but it's a goodie. Yeah, it it, it is, and I think that the mm. the the flow of it, and that's the, I mean that's the heartbreaking thing sometimes about magic in it is no one can see, <laughs> no one, you know, to them, and, and it goes the other way. Is it could be a really simple thing, and they're thinking it's complex, yes. like you said, the the, the amount of peak yeah. devices and all that kind of stuff, and. So there's yeah. a... Well, 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 well the, the, the thing is, um, and I'm not trying to bring you back to Uri Geller for any particular reason, but it, Uri is that example. It's well, all of the great mentalists. David Burgess told me the same thing. Peter Turner told me the same thing. And, you know, great mentalists in the past will tell you the same thing. It's the effect. Think Malini. It's the effect. It. it the method shouldn't matter. The method should be comfortable if we want to live with it day to day. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's not about the method. It's about the effect. And look at Uri Geller. He took over the world bending a spoon. I mean, how is that possible? Yeah. It's the effect. Presentation. A absolutely. In, in the eyes of the, I mean, I would have one sort of caveat to that. Is that it's in the eyes of the, for the performance and the experience of the, uh, audience it's the effect mm. I think for you as a performer mm. for again longevity it has to be a method that mm. you enjoy using oh you know, that, that, that for sure other, other, yeah. otherwise otherwise it will fall by the wayside yeah you, you, and we're going right back to the beginning of this discussion I mean you have to have that joy that thrill that you know you boom you're 100 percent full on with it that's your attitude and your performance material. That's everything. Because if it's not everything, you, people will see it. They'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah. It has to kind of fit. It has to kind of match you. Yeah. And I think that again, people and, and it's understandable at the beginning, but people don't realise that there's so much available now, and it's so intoxicating. Like you said, a peak device allows you to create a miracle, but does it fit with what who you are and what you want to do? And do you enjoy doing that again and again and again? And I think that's the and you might, but yeah. it's... Well, that, that's true, because, because at the end of the day, the peak device should be forgotten. It should never be remembered. It shouldn't form part of anybody's memory of the experience. You read their mind. You didn't have them write on a card, put it in a wallet, turn the wallet over, flip it around and put it in the back pocket or whatever. You just read their mind. What wallet? Well, that, I didn't write it? anything down, did I? You know, I mean, that's, that's, you know, it, 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 that's the difference between a good performer and somebody that's learning. 
you know, the method must be forgotten. It should never be visible either optically or mentally. Okay, and, and mentally is a big thing. I mean, it should never be suspected because it doesn't matter what is suspected. It doesn't matter if it's the correct solution or not the correct solution. If something is suspected, it may as well be the correct. And also, the end result is the same. Boom. Yeah, and, and I've been thinking about this a lot. Again, getting sent a lot of stuff to review. Mm. Some mm. of the stuff we get sent is, you know, when you get it, that the the item itself is so mm. impressive. It's so it allows you to, as a magician, you look at that and go, that is as clean as it gets. Because obviously they don't know, you've got a thumb, you've got a device, you know, they could be writing something on a bit of paper, you could see in real time that they're writing. It doesn't get cleaner than that. Or maybe they don't have to. So, but, so why aren't I, why when I do my shows, am I still doing fourth dimensional telepathy with envelopes? Why aren't I doing that? And I think it's because there's a ceiling to an effect, but also they're not seeing the method anyway. So they're not seeing the the, the, the clean way might not be as entertaining because you haven't got three people on stage having a laugh with them and writing things that, do you know what I mean? There's more to that, it. That, well, that's exactly the case. I mean, you're right. You have greater involvement when you have pens and paper and that sort of interaction. But people are becoming wary of technology. Um, recently on my social media feeds, there have been advertisements for a pen with a camera in it. It's just like a rather fancy sharpie but it records what you write and sends that in real time to your phone and this is being sold to the general public this yeah. is a tool an office tool for the future well okay we're going to have to start rethinking things aren't we i yeah. don't like tricks with cell phones i don't like them at all because it's, some of them are absolutely mind-bogglingly brilliant but the cell phone and what it does is so magical in of itself that a card trick over a cell phone sort of pales in comparison. I mean, the cell phone's always, already more magical. It can take me on a, an excursion through the museums. I can visit Uri Geller's museum live on the cell phone. You know, I can visit the, the pyramids live on the cell phone, uh, an art gallery in Italy. Wow, Google Earth. Wow, we can talk live from continent yeah. to continent. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Matt, we, we, we need we need to steer clear of technology if we can, because technology will and is becoming the equivalent of well, it must have gone up your sleeve. Yeah, okay? that's, a really, be, that's a really yeah, interesting. Yeah. And, and that's where it will go eventually. Yeah, and I and I you know, I agree. Um, I think the. The, the, I think the only, I mean, obviously there's a lot of apps that use the phone when the phone doesn't come in, so they don't know it's an app, they don't even know the phone's involved, yeah. which is great. Yeah, yeah. And of sure. course, you know, there I love Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Levitt's um, The Stranger is brilliant because it's using your phone as a phone, yeah. you know, so you're phoning a stranger yes, and saying, yeah. so that's, again, it's, it's a lovely, I mean, I've ended a show with it and, it, and it's lovely because the phone's completely yeah, in context. Yeah. So how else are you going to phone someone? You've got to do it on a phone, right? It's not like used for a thing to... Well, yeah, well, in, in context like that, I mean, that's the equivalent of doing a magic trick in a spectator's hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. you, they're making the call, their phone. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. context. It's a kind of embracing of the technology. I think for what you know, the, from the early apps, there was like it was, you know, yeah, and now yeah, it's yeah. becoming, because pe like you said, people aren't buying it anymore. They're going to go with an app, even if they don't know how it's done. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, go, so going back to, you know, from that to, you know, back to the kind of nuts and bolts of your work, which is looking at premise, looking at plot, and, and just very briefly on plot. I, I love, you know, you, you, and I love Stephen King's on writing, is which you, you talk about in the book. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I read that book every year. It's just, just to refresh my brain, you know? Uh, I totally recommend it for creative. Mm. It's so inspiring yeah. to me, not just for writing, but yeah. also, interestingly, mm. for... Mm. You mentioned plot earlier, and in Magic, mm. I think mm. that there is... Mm. When I read, read a lot of theory books, it was all like, you know, you've got... A, it's all about mapping it out and mm. keeping to a thing. Mm. And also mm. writing books say this a lot. They say you've got to know exactly what you're writing, you've got to draft it, mm. and you've got to block it out. And then Stephen King came along and went, well, I don't do that. 
I kind of have a vague idea of where the story's going and I let it develop. And I think for some people, yep. many people, clearly me and you, we need that. We need to have that freedom to, yes, we might have a kind of idea, but not be too scared of going off the track and opening up that creativity. Well, that's, that's just it. It, it does take a leap, a leap of faith because um, you don't know whether your investment of time is going to result in anything, but you have to be confident that it will. And again, back to Stephen King, uh, he said in that book as well, your story will come out somewhere. It will come out. Just write it. Don't be concerned how it will finish. It will find a way. It will come out of its own accord. Now, um, that's that's basically what I apply to, to creating magic nowadays. It wasn't always that way. It takes a long time, I think. What well, took a long time for me to be confident enough to do that. But uh, you look at the book Machinations, Robert Neal's trapdoor card. Uh, there were a whole lot of things that both he and Martin got. Boom. I got a copy too. There you go. Boom. <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, there are things that he and Martin, uh, Robert E. Neal and Martin Gardner did not see because they took it in a direction they wanted to take it in and they took it as far as they could. There was no need to take it any further. It was perfect. But by accepting that, they set up blinders and they couldn't see what was to the left and what was to the right. And if you read the book, there are other things hidden within um, those folds that can be brought to the fore and used to enhance those original ideas. And that's, to me, that's the fun. That's the yeah. fun. And that book started out with a blank piece of paper. I cut the door in it and decided, well, okay, this is blank on both sides. Is there any effect in that? It turns out there was. And then it just sort of developed from there. But you have to just let it roll. Same with symmetry and parity with the Svengali deck. I mean, it started off just looking for a way of solving the any card at any number with a Svengali deck which is the perfect tool because uh, the chosen card can appear at any number. The card before and after the chosen number are different. Perfect. Yeah. Only problem is if you want to allow a free choice of card, you're going to have to carry 52 Svengali decks, mm. and that's a big bulge in the pocket. Um, so that's where it started. And then it was like, okay, I've finished, I'm done. And then I thought, well, whoa, 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 do we need force cards? Why do we have 26 force cards? Let's throw some of those out. Let's throw them all out. And then we came up with all the other stuff. Yeah. But you have to just be open to it. I think, I think that's it, Ben. And I think that's why it's why people like you are so important because you, because, you know, you, you delve into that for us, really. Because a lot of it, you know, that, that, I'd lo you know sometimes I think, oh, I, I learn a thing and I review it, and I think, oh, I'll spend more time with that, but there's another thing to review. And, there's, and I think that's the kind of same with people learning tricks as well. They go, oh, I'd love to spend more on that, but I just bought that thing, so yep. I better go over to that, and I just bought that thing. And I think you remind us, when you do two things, Ben, and you and others, the creatives like you, is that you remind us how important it is to stick with a thing as you you mentioned uri you know it stick with if you if you feel it and it won't go away in you and you keep going i want to go back to that thing then if that voice doesn't stop go back to it you remind us of that and then when when people like me haven't got time you kind of do it for me and i go great someone else is just <laughs> taking it back to the first card trick i ever learned the card trick that took that kept me in australia for another six months because i ran out of money you know, with a Svengali deck. I was going into clubs and doing it for yeah, drunk well, people. It was, and, you it was know. the first magic trick I ever bought as well, yeah. Yeah, and you've took me back to that, to a point where yeah. I've spent hours with it, you know, again, which is great. So, Ben, okay. you know, we're nearly, at, we're nearly at an hour. I want to carry on this conversation, but just briefly, I just want to tell people, yes, I'm going to review it. Symmetry, parity, and, um, and the Chimera deck, just stunning. Oh, thank you. Um, You've got very, very quickly, you've got something very exciting in, in January. I don't want to talk too much about it. We'll do a whole new thing on it. Actually, that will be the time we'll do, we'll do another conversation. But just tell us briefly That's, what's happening yeah. soon, because I'm very excited about it. 
That would be brilliant. Well, um, we've been talking about Uri Geller and um, January sees the release of a whole new book, Bend It Like Geller. Uri's a big football fan and Bend It um, Like Beckham and Bend It Like <laughs> Geller seemed to work for him. <clears throat> he signed off on it, which I thought was absolutely wonderful. This book examines the entire 50-year history of the genre, brings all the methods together, Dozens and dozens and dozens of previously unpublished photographs, the entire story, it will become the reference, I hope. And um, we find out whether Uri's fessing up or not. You've got to find the book. You've got to buy the book. Now, the, uh, all the details, Vanish Magazine, January, they're doing a whole cover story on it. And um, I'm so excited. This is a beautiful book. Vanishing Inc. published it or are publishing it. Um, Steve Shufton, my editor, beautiful job, Eva from Mexico, Eva Elizalde is illustrating yeah. 100 I, illustrations. Right. It's just going to be a beautiful book. Um, and I've got some great stories to tell you about it. I mean, it was censored in China. Right. I mean, <laughs> you, the, the stories, does, yeah, it was pulled off the presses. I, we'll have to go into it at another time. But the stories about bringing this book to market are just incredible. Um, oh, I can't, yeah, wait. can't wait. I can't wait, mate, because it's right up, up my street. You can that picture if you want later, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it, yeah, I will. I think um, I, yeah, yeah. You sent me one, I didn't know I to show it, because I know this is the first time it's really been talked about. So, um, yeah, so that's an exclusive, is, I think. It is, yeah. Yeah, the new, the new yeah, book dude, in hey, January. Thank you. Uh, ben, it like, I cannot wait, because I'm doing loads of metal bending stuff at the moment, so it's so exciting for me, Ben, that you're doing <laughs> this, as is all your stuff, and I really urge people to check Ben's stuff out, go back to, you know, to the, as I said, crossroads and, and, and silent running and things like that. And, you know, and just read Luch's intro to silent running to know this stuff works. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you just find the creativity and the inspiration. Yeah. Great. Ben, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. I'll pretend we're going now. I'll say goodbye, but I want to talk to you afterwards, but, um, check out okay. Ben's stuff. Links will be thank below. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome, mate. And thanks so much uh, for joining me. My pleasure. Cheers, mate. So thanks so much to Ben for that. I just loved it. I'm in a, I'm in a better mood today now I've done that. Do check out all his stuff. Go to wowbound.com, wowbound.com, and you can find all of his publications there. And, of course, his uh, two recent books, Free Vanishing Inc., and one coming up in January. Do share this. If you know anybody that you think would like this, any other magicians, let them know about it. That'd be great. Uh, it's a chunk of time to ask someone uh, to spend with me. So, uh, so let's make sure a lot of people watch it. And of course, it helps me as well. Uh, talking of which, go and check out onlinemagic.co after you've gone to wowbound.com, onlinemagic.co, and uh, ask any questions. Do comment below, and I'll follow up those comments in the live shows on Thursdays, 5 o'clock UK time, when I'm not gigging. All right, have a great one. Like and subscribe. Thanks, Ben. See you later.